Hello and welcome back to Drama Investigator. Saucy, saucy. Welcome to part two of our Tanati Westbrook lawsuit expose, where we delve into the nitty gritty details from her current lawsuit with Clark Swanson, her former business partner at Halo Beauty. Also, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can get updated on all the future tea. Within the case file of the lawsuit so far, we have discovered Tati and her husband's evil, vindictive ways. They managed to make 16 million behind their business partner's back through Tati Beauty. Beauty, despite promising their partner they would make Halo Beauty Tati's leading business. And also, juicy juicy, this ain't the first time Tati's husband has been sued for criminal activity, except last time it had to do with drugs. And I promise you, as soon as I find the case file for that lawsuit, I will expose. But for now, let's get on with part two of this expose. The Westbrooks announced the second breach of duty, Tati Fragrance. Despite these business disruptions, Mr. Swanson continued to devote his efforts to the success of Halo Beauty. The Westbrooks, however, had moved on from Halo Beauty to Tati Beauty. Just months after the launch of Tati Beauty in October 2019, Mr. Westbrook told Mr. Swanson not to promote Halo Beauty sales for the rest of the year, claiming Halo could just coast for the rest of the year. In fact, the Westbrooks spent their time and energy promoting Tati Beauty and ignoring Halo. This left Halo with little choice but to coast. In 2020, the Westbrooks have continued to cut Halo Beauty out of future opportunities. The next opportunity, fragrance products. In late February 2020, Mr. Westbrook told Mr. Swanson that the Westbrooks, spurred on by their new talent agency, UTA, would launch a fragrance product in collaboration with a New York-based marketing and manufacturing firm. According to Mr. Westbrook, this was Ms. Westbrook's idea because she wanted to do something on her own without her husband husband or Mr. Swanson. Again, like he did with cosmetics, Mr. Westbrook claimed that this would not detract from Halo Beauty's business or the Westbrook's commitment to Halo Beauty. To support this claim, Mr. Westbrook told Mr. Swanson that Ms. Westbrook had very little to do with the creation and launch of Tati Beauty. The agreement with Seed Beauty, he said, was turnkey, with Seed handling all the formulas, manufacturing, social media and commercial agreements. This of course directly contradicts Ms. Westbrook's statement on YouTube tooting her deep involvement in the Tati Beauty product. Mr. Swanson reminded Mr. Westbrook that the fragrance line was already contemplated for Halo Beauty. As early as April 25th, 2018, Mr. Swanson emailed Mr. Westbrook regarding Kim Kardashian's fragrance product and packaging, and noted the high margins in the business line. On March the 31st, 2020, Mr. Swanson emailed Mr. Westbrook about the fragrance line. Mr. Swanson spelled it out. Tati Fragrance is a product line that we contemplated when we formed Halo, and again when I gave you and Tati the controlling interest in the business. Even if you are right that Tati Fragrance could be good for Halo, there is no way it is better for Halo than having Halo own and operate the fragrance piece of the business. As an officer member owner of Halo, I don't think that any of us can, in good faith, claim that any other course of action would be in the best interests of Halo. Please reconsider in light of Tati and your obligations to Halo. According to Mr. Westbrook, Ms. Westbrook decided against a fragrance product because of Mr. Swanson's opposition. Despite this, the Westbrooks have not committed to conducting the fragrance business under Halo Beauty. Contrary to the Westbrooks' lip service, Halo Beauty is not grown with Tati Beauty's success. To the contrary, the Westbrooks' neglect of Halo Beauty in favour of new opportunities has caused severe damage to Halo Beauty. Most recently, as a result of Mr. Swanson's demand that the Westbrooks keep their agreement with him, James Westbrook, without Mr. Swanson's authorisation, distributed hundreds of thousands of dollars in operating income from the Halo Beauty Partners LLC operating accounts to its members. Mr. Swanson is informed and believes and alleges that this is a further attempt to devalue and destroy Halo Beauty by looting company coffers in advance of a lawsuit. Shareholder derivative allegations. At all material times, including including the present, Clark Swanson has owned one third of the shares of Halo Beauty Inc. All all material times including the present, Swanson Global Enterprises LLC has owned 33% of the membership interests in Halo Beauty Partners LLC. Plaintiff Clark Swanson informed in writing at the board of Halo Beauty Inc. and the members of Halo Beauty Partners LLC of the ultimate facts that give rise to each of the causes of action against each defendant. Plaintiff has further demanded in writing that the defendants take action to recover the losses suffered by Halo Beauty Inc. and Halo Beauty Partners LLC, described in the complaint and to prevent further harm to the companies. Defendants have not taken action to remedy these harms. On information and belief, Plaintiff Clark Swanson alleges that any further demands on Tatiana and James Westbrook, or on Halo Beauty Inc, or Halo Beauty Partners LLC, would be futile, as the individual defendants are the primary agents and beneficiaries of the wrongful conduct that has harmed Halo Beauty Inc and Halo Beauty Partners LLC. Additionally, James Westbrook and Tati Westbrook own two-thirds of Halo Beauty Inc, and through Tati Halo Inc, 66% of the Halo Beauty Partners LLC. Their ownership gives them the effective control over these companies. Their breach 
of fiduciary duties in favour of their own interests at the expense of Halo Beauty Inc and Halo Beauty Partners is such that there is substantial doubt that these two directors are disinterested and independent, and there is substantial doubt that the transactions challenged in this complaint are the product of valid exercise of business judgement. Then basically the rest of the lawsuit addresses the breaches of contractual agreements that Tati, her husband and their business partner Swanson had in place, and FYI there was a lot. So there was two counts of breach of fiduciary duty, which basically means that Tati and her husband had breached the trust between their business partner and profited millions behind his back. Then there was two counts of negligence, basically saying that they went behind Swanson and Halo Beauty's back, which ultimately caused financial harm to Halo Beauty. There were two counts of gross negligence, which again just means they delayed producing cosmetic products and went behind Swanson's back and launched products with Tati Beauty. And I always kind of found it a bit weird how she had two separate companies, like, hmm. And it's interesting now to note that Tati Beauty would have never existed if it wasn't for Swanson, because he was the initial investor in Halo Beauty, which helped her get her first business Halo off the ground. And without him, her and her husband had a real bad credit rating, meaning they wouldn't have been able to start a business in the first place. And essentially, they used some of that money from Halo to start up Tati Beauty. Saucy, saucy. So then there was a count of fraudulent misrepresentation, which means false promise. The defendants didn't perform their initial promises that they had made to Swanson, their business partner. Then the lawsuit goes into detail about the breach of contract, again, pretty much stating that they lied to Swanson about launching makeup and cosmetics, etc., with Halo Beauty, and that they went behind his back and did all that with Tati Beauty. Then there was a breach of duty of good faith and fair dealing, and promissory estoppel, basically meaning that Tati and her husband should be made liable for breaking their promise to Swanson and pay up restitution for the harm that they caused. So basically, the rest of the lawsuit just goes over everything we've already mentioned, and from the looks of things, Swanson is very much in the right. Tati and her hubby knowingly went behind his back and lied to him, made millions, and then ignored him. He's definitely entitled to like at least a third of their earnings from Tati Beauty, and from my calculations, they're going to be expected to pay over five million, possibly more. Ooh, Bernie Bernie. Now what does Shane Dawson, Jeffree Star, and James Charles think of all this? Well, Shane decided to hop on social media after months and months of disappearance. Although he didn't mention the Tati drama, we know for a fact that he is loving this. However, please don't forget the main reason Shane got cancelled was because his past got brought to light, and he seriously can't come back from that in my opinion. James Charles hasn't really addressed anything, but we can imagine that he's low-key loving this drama. I feel like this whole lawsuit shows what a cash grab Halo Beauty was, and in hindsight, all of Tati's competitors will be loving this too, because now her products can't sell, it paves the way for other multivitamin companies like Sugar Bear Hair, who want to promote the heck out of their products. So what exactly is James doing at present? Not addressing the drama at all. In fact, he's celebrating his career. He's just hit a major milestone. Oh yeah, he's on the cover of Vogue. Success is the best revenge, as the old saying goes. <laughs> I'm on the cover of Vogue. Me, James Charles. I oh I like I literally have a Vogue cover. <laughs> I can't even believe this is real. I am on the cover of Vogue Portugal for the November issue, and I've never been more excited for anything in my entire life. I cannot even believe that this is real. A few months ago, Vogue reached out to me and were like, "Hey, sister, we really want to do something with you." And of course, I was so honored. I thought it was just going to be an interview or a photo shoot or something. And once we started talking, they told me that they wanted me. I am so honored, I am so grateful. The entire team was so amazing to work with and they gave me full creative direction on this too, which was so just amazing. The issue theme is beauty of imperfection and I'm so excited for you guys to get to read the entire interview that I did because it really talks a lot about my journey as an influencer and what I value on my channel. And there's so many other incredible photos from the shoot. There's also maybe a few more covers that'll be coming out too. <laughs> have to stay tuned this entire week because I have so many more things that I want to share with you guys from this shoot. The images, the interview, the whole piece is just really so, so cool and I cannot wait for you guys to have it in your hands. The magazine will officially be live on newsstands this Friday, November 6th, but the reason why I'm telling you right now is because if you head on over to the Vogue Portugal website, which is vogue.pt slash shop, you guys can actually pre-order the magazine right now, meaning the second that it goes live, you guys will be the first ones to have it in your hands, which is so, so cool. You know, we as the sisters are such an incredible and strong fan base and I would never have a Vogue cover if it were not for you guys. And I really wanna show the Vogue team how strong you guys truly, truly are. I am the first ever influencer to get a cover, which is so crazy and just such an incredible opportunity. And there's so many other influencers out there that I think would be amazing, amazing stories to tell. So let's show the Vogue team how strong the internet community really, really is. Thank you guys.
And lastly, has Jeffree Star addressed the drama? Nah, he's out here partying it up. He claims it's a Halloween party, but let's be real. He's celebrating the fact Tati's business is flopping. So what are your thoughts on all this drama? Let me know in the comments.